Welcome to this new episode of Your Next Trade, episode number 31. Today, it's going to be AI FOMO. So artificial intelligence, fear of missing out. And let's start with this chart, which is the chart of NVIDIA. NVIDIA up more than 100% for the year, now standing at roughly 750 billion as a market cap trading on 30 times revenues. What is very much interesting is obviously artificial intelligence that we have been talking for the last three or four months is making all the headlines. So if you do a Google Trends, you'll see that uh, from February onwards, everything is exploding. And very much with what happened 20 years ago when we were looking at the first steps of the internet, everyone wants to be invested in artificial intelligence. And what is happening very often, it's, it's very hard to uh, forecast what's going to happen. So you can be putting any numbers in terms of valuation to NVIDIA and all the players. Um, and that is almost um, an endless move on the way up. Interestingly, if you look at this week, and this is something that we're going to be talking a lot because we had the OPEX week, uh, on Thursday, there was a huge volume uh, in NVIDIA. We were talking more than 1 million uh, calls traded. Uh, 1 million calls, so if you multiply this 1 million per the 100, that p gives you 100 million shares, roughly, that could have been traded uh, for uh, NVIDIA. And that explains as well the spike in the volume that we saw on Thursday, one day before the expiry. So overall, market is very not much driven by uh, so many fundamentals. The reopening of China, which is reopening but not that crazy. If you think about the earnings season, well, has been a bit better versus the expectations. But still, you know, uh, we are back at the levels that we had in, in January of this year. Uh, if you look at Europe, Europe, most of the economic indicators have been trending down for the last couple of months. If you look at inflation, inflation has been coming down, but it's still around 5%. So uh, many drivers that are not telling you a fantastic picture, but the market is very much driven by this uh, fear of missing out, both in technology and artificial intelligence. So if we look at the year to date asset performances, as, you, as always, now uh, S&P is roughly uh, close to 10% on the year. Um, with the beta of the Nasdaq, uh, Nasdaq is up 20%. Uh, very st a strong move, Nikkei, Nikkei uh, up 18%. So um, now, if you've been on Twitter, if you've been on social media for this week, uh, we had a very strong move uh, for the Japanese market. Everyone is telling you they have been long and making a lot of money. So if we quickly, we look at the week to date asset performances, very strong week uh, for the Japanese market, which could be explained not only by the inflation, which was in line as of yesterday, uh, so the Japanese um, economy experienced uh, roughly an inline inflation, but I think more importantly, uh, if you remember uh, in January, uh, market was expecting probably and potentially some changes from the new Bank of Japan governor. Uh, but actually what he said more or less yesterday that um, they're not going to be changing the very accommodative policy from the Bank of Japan. So that means in other words, quantitative easing is going to carry on. Uh, they're going to be data dependent as always, but that means they are still going to be uh, accommodative in buying bonds, in buying ETFs, and that explained a lot about the price move um, of these uh, topics of the underlying, uh, not necessarily about a much stronger economy, uh, but overall, what has been true for the week for equities, uh, we had a very strong week. So 1.6% for the S&P, 3% for the NASDAQ, 2% in Europe. So for me, it's a bit of a suffering uh, looking at my European shorts. But overall, OPEX has been driven uh, this strong market. Uh, if we look at, at the currencies, we are across uh, uh, roughly uh, flattish uh, for the US dollar. After a strong start of the week and a strong week before for the US dollar, we know that the position has been very much um, short the dollar and has been a bit of inversion over the last uh, 10 days. Uh, crypto, uh, let's say uh, flattish and WTI copper telling you the same story about the world reopening and channel reopening not as, as strong as what people are saying. What about the week, the year to date industry performance? The picture is more or less the same. To semiconductors on top of the world, on the other end of the spectrum, banks, uh, not much of a difference. If you look at the SP, which is here, you can see again that there are many 
losers versus not that many winners. So we know we have been talking a lot about this market breadth uh, with the market very much driven by very few names, very few industries that are leading uh, this market. What about the week to date industry performance? Very interesting that you see here that the sum is uh, that was on Thursday. Thursday, very strong uh, market uh, for for the semiconductor, we had a very strong week for NVIDIA, as I said, uh, up from 280 to 315, so roughly 10% for the week. When NVIDIA is up, um, that is first uh, putting the market higher because this is a good weighting of the S&P and that is helping the, the whole sector to go up, the whole industry. Interestingly, banks and regional banks have been uh, acting very well. Uh, so there has been a lot of short covering. If you look at the different factors for this week, um, that must have been a pretty uh, difficult uh, week for, for, for many hedge funds because the they heavily shorted uh, the ones that were not uh, um, in in the uh, as long and more as a short have been outperforming the market other end of the spectrum. Anything that is rates related, utilities, treasuries um, have been struggling. Gold miners, uh, as this is a, ring, a risk on, gold has been struggling uh, and and going below the two thousand level, uh, two thousand dollar. Sorry. What about the sector performance? I'm, I'm more interested into that one, which is the week to death sector performance. As you can see, most of the sectors that have been struggling are the sectors that are are struggling when yields are going higher. Uh, so we are talking real estate, we are talking utilities and the defensive as well, uh, not for the yields, but just for the risk on market. So healthcare and consumer staples. And on the other end of the spectrum, everything that is uh, more risk on has been outperforming the, the market. So risk on market and uh, sectors that uh, underperform when yields are going up have been struggling. Why? Because as we can see in this page, looking at the US 10 years, now at 368%, we are up on the week 20 bips or 0.2% roughly. Uh, so bonds have been sold off, yields have been on the way up. Um, and that is true, not only in the US, but true as well for UK, Germany. So kind of, um, Bonds that we had before the 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 weakness of the bonds is 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 happening again. If you look at the ten versus the two, which is the inverted yield curve, we are very much at the same level uh, at minus sixty bits. What about the Fed expectation through the Fed fund rate? So the Fed fund rates these days are five point zero eight. For the uh, June, we are expecting 5.11, so not that different. So expectations are, uh, for the time being, for the Fed not to be moving that much uh, in, the, in the June meeting. But more interestingly, I'm looking at the December. So what we had last week and that what we had as of yesterday. So last week, we had 4.49%, which means that market was expecting as of last week, um, rates to go down by roughly 60 bips, 0.6 percent, whereas as of yesterday, we are expecting roughly a move of 35 bips. So a differential of 25 bips between last Friday and this Friday uh, on the way up. So not as much cuts as what we had a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago or a week ago. Uh, so a bit more um, um, dovi uh, sorry, hawkish uh, Fed um, um, talks from Fed Powell yesterday. Not that much hawkish, but saying, you know, we need to be careful with inflation. We don't want to be doing the same mistakes as what we did in, 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 uh, in the 70s. And the market has been pricing a bit more a Fed a bit more hawkish, uh, and that tells you as well that uh, probably that the Fed, the market participants are uh, are expecting uh, a less of a chance of a recession going into H2. What about the VIX? I think this is the interesting part. So the VIX is at 16. You know the rule of 16%, meaning that. Uh, market is expecting a 1% move of the S&P. But if you think about the debt ceiling, so that ceiling is making the headlines. We know that Biden is in Japan this weekend and is supposed to come back uh, tomorrow. There has been headlines yesterday that the talks would be difficult. They will be difficult until the end. Uh, but more interestingly, if you think that uh, there is a chance that um, there would be more tensions into, into those uh, debt ceiling um, 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 deals between the Democrats and the Republicans, as you can see, the VIX, 
uh, June is not that expensive uh, at 19.6% uh, versus if you think that uh, there is a small chance if you look at the CDS market is pricing uh, higher prices or higher chances that the, uh, the, there might be issues with the debt ceiling similarly to with the T-bills uh, one month and two months. So at 19.6%, um, that is probably uh, the, the, the trade to do. And now I would be to, to jump into the technical analysis. So something that we have been flagging over and over, which is the 4200 for the S&P level. Uh, so we close roughly at this level. Again, uh, an OPEX week is always distorting, but we are at the top of the range for the S&P. Uh, we will have to see um, what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks with the debt ceiling and with the momentum. Normally, the seasonality of the S&P going into the next four to six weeks is not really good on average. So you're going to most of the time you have a weakish June. Uh, and as we are resetting from the option expiry, uh, you could have uh, some window of weakness uh, going into the next two, two to three weeks. What about the, the, the Nasdaq? The Nasdaq we flagged, it's, it has been trending higher and breaking higher uh, because this is where you get the market lead. This is where you get the drivers, the, the Russell, the Google, the Meta, the Facebook. So this is Meta, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Nvidia versus the overall market. You see how it has been outperforming since the start of the year and more recently. So we are talking literally from 368 to 381. Uh, so that's roughly 4 to 5% uh, versus the, 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 the outperformance versus the market. The Russell. Russell is not uh, doing that much, uh, despite the, the the volumes in call options that we're gonna flagging flagging a, a, a bit later. Russell versus the the S the the Nasdaq. Uh, that is a bit obvious that uh, most of the charts, Nasdaq versus something will be looking very good because the Nasdaq has been extremely strong. KRE for the regional regional banks. Uh, so yeah, the candle looks good, but we are. Just uh, we just closed at the level uh, where we opened uh, uh, 10 days ago. Bank of America has a flag last week. This is really a chart I'm looking at uh, for the potential uh, spread of the issues that we have in the regional banks in the in the more uh, in the bigger banks uh, so far it was a good week but uh, the trend is still is still down so far emerging markets same picture so no more not much time to spend on sxxp for the stock 600 we close at the highs but you know this is the highs that we challenge over and over the most interesting chart for this week for Europe is the DAX, which is making highs. Uh, so made a bit of a new highs, but uh, literally uh, challenging the levels that we had at the end of, of, of 2021 and start of 2022, roughly. So uh, we are at the top of the range based on the OPEX. Uh, we need uh, to see what's going to be uh, the next few weeks. CL1, interestingly, again, if China is firing on all cylinders, that is not really showing on the CL1. And there are even more talks that, um, that uh, OPEC might be cutting production again. So if they are cutting production, that means the the demand is not that strong. There are some underlying uh, story, which uh, because obviously you get electrical vehicles that are using more and more and, and cutting the demand for oil, but structurally as well, that is explained with the world uh, not strong in terms of GDP. Copper telling you exactly the same picture. So uh, commodities are not giving you a strong uh, GDP story. Uh, I'm interested in the euro dollar. So we've seen the weakness of the dollar. Uh, then, you know, the strengths over the last couple of weeks, which again can be explained by the, uh, an extreme positioning. Uh, everyone was short the dollar. Uh, if you look at the CFTC positioning, pretty extreme. Uh, and it's now coming back a bit. US dollar versus Japanese yen. Again, as I said, I think the uh, if you get a bit of time, Reread what the uh, new Bank of Japan governor has been saying yesterday. Uh, so there were many headlines saying uh, we're not going to be changing the policy, uh, the accommodative policy that we had for uh, more than uh, 10 years now. Uh, so don't expect changes, meaning 
uh, weakening uh, our control of the yield curve that the Japanese 10 years is still around 0.4%. So the carry uh, is not helping. Uh, yes, the underlying economy is a bit better in, in Japan, but still, uh, most of the moves that we had around uh, the, as the assets in Japan could be explained by the continuation of uh, quantitative easing. Um, uh, USD, Turkish Lira, so we are uh, waiting for the uh, second round of the election but outcome, but still the the story is the same. Uh, you get the carry and you get the uh, uh, inflation that is massive in uh, the Turkish economy. Finally, two charts starting with Google. So Google, very, very strong. Uh, and all the charts that I've been using have been weekly chart uh, for this week. Uh, since we had the breakout around the 109, 110, it has been a one-way traffic. So we moved 15%. On Friday, there was a bit of... of um, of weakness uh, in the price action on the hourly chart. So that is one to, to monitor. As always, trying to, to find uh, where are the leaders, NVIDIA, uh, very, very strong, uh, strong candle move from, as I said, from 280 to 320 um, on, on very strong volume. So that is helping the market, the overall market to go higher. What about uh, we go back into this week and what has been happening? So many things that we had. We had the retail sales on, on Tuesday that actually were, were okay uh, on the core. The headline was not that good, but the core that matters was was okay. So we had 0.6% months on months and 4.3% year on year. But if you look over the last four months, um, it's a bit of shoppy to say the, the least. And what's going to happen is we're probably going to be reverting to the mean. It's not going to happen overnight, but that means don't expect uh, the U.S. consumer to be firing on all cylinders, and especially going into H2, where most of the cash reserves of the U.S. consumer will be fading away. And that means for September, October onwards, uh, I think the U.S. consumer will really be strugg struggling. So if you still believe that the U.S. economy is made off by 70, 80 percent by the U.S. consumer, that could be a problem. So that is for the macro. We didn't have that many numbers in terms of macro f for the week. It was more price action. It was more calls uh, and how the options have been uh, driving the market. So let's start with the with the OPEX and the price action of the S&P. So on, on, on Wednesday, we had the uh, VIX expiry. So the VIX futures expire at the open of the S&P. And after that, we started to see a move in the S&P, many calls happening. And uh, we went from the 4150 pin on the uh, on the options to the 4200 okay 4200 that was the big level and you can see here two charts so here this is for the uh, call options 4200 for the s p you see the big rise in volumes okay so suddenly we went from zero to roughly 70 80 thousand uh, uh, options traded every day and then we move from from the thursday to the friday same story 4200 and s p pin uh, we had 70,000 roughly options and the market is driven by all those options. You can do exactly the same with the Russell, uh, Russell on, Friday, on Thursday, uh, big volume for options. Uh, literally, you see the, the spike. That was the same for Nvidia. That was the same for very, very, for many, many names. So not much about fundamentals, even if you like to put like a, a, a narrative behind it that this is, you know, the economy is better and X, Y, Z, China, blah, blah, blah. This is dri op uh, driven op driven by options. Uh, and from Friday, from, sorry, Wednesday to Friday, it was the OPEX uh, and, and the drive into the 4200. So strong move uh, feels like, you know, there was some unwinding of positioning from people that were probably suffering on Thursday and Friday. Friday, to a certain extent, I have one of them, but I'm, I'm, I'm still alive. What about the catalyst going forward? So starting, uh, so we're going to have Fed Bullard on, on Monday. Uh, the guy is always a bit, uh, sorry, the guy is um, always a bit hawkish, uh, to say the least. Uh, more importantly, we got the flash PMIs on Tuesday. Uh, will tell us, you know, uh, what is the leading indicator um, uh, flashing for the next uh, uh, for the next few months. So that will be on Tuesday. Uh, we're gonna have an imp very important earnings. So this is the the why I'm, I call this uh, 
this um, um, episode, the artificial intelligence uh, fear of missing out. NVIDIA, as I said, up 110% for the year, 750 billion market cap. There is tons of tweets telling you um, this, uh, um, um, uh, sorry, this valuation is completely absurd. It doesn't really matter if you've been living in 2000, if you'll be living in even like a couple of years ago, um, when the market decides to move, especially with the artificial intelligence, as I said, you know, it's a, it's a, not a long-term project, it's a long-term story. And that means we still don't know who are going to be the winners and the losers, but you can be putting like huge valuation uh, before it really starts to matter. So Wednesday, big uh, big earnings that will be after the close, how the NVIDIA has been behaving in the past. So this is for the most recent earnings. As you can see, in February, the move was 12% and they closed 14%. Before that, a kind of bit of struggling. But since uh, the last three to five months, it's all about artificial intelligence. OK, uh, so the expectations, if they mentioned 50 times during the call that artificial intelligence is good, uh, the, mar the, the market will like it. If you look at absolute move on the day, which is realized volatility, it was 6% on the day, and market is expecting 7.8% uh, implied volatility through options. If you look at the, at the money strat also, not that different. Uh, if you think about uh, the uh, how, by how much the stock could be moving from time to time. On Wednesday, we're going to have the FOMC minutes, which are uh, telling, uh, uh, um, uh, recapitulating what the Fed has been saying during the last FOMC meeting, which was uh, pretty hawkish. Uh, so I want to believe that uh, the headliners are going to be still hawkish. Um, and then, uh, obviously, the market is very much driven by the debt ceiling talks. Uh, as I said, Biden will come back in the US on, on Sunday. Um, I think there's going to be a bit of, um, sorry for my English, some shit show between the Democrats and the Republicans of pretending who's the toughest one. Uh, so we could have some headlines for the next couple of weeks. And we know that uh, the government will be running out of money in the next two to four weeks. So a deal needs to be done. Um, we saw the headline line yesterday that there was no deal the market you know looking at the s p only went down 30 points then recover to end up at the pin of 4200 so as always look for the options where they are where the open where are the open interest uh, where is the flow because that that is very much where uh, the market is driven finally similar to these options we would like to know um, by how much the, the, the market, the thing, the market, the uh, how much market participants think the S&P, for instance, will be moving for this week. That will be roughly 1.4%. We have seen that a strategy that has been working very well until Wednesday was to be selling intraday uh, uh, volatility. OK, so you'll be s selling uh, straddles. But actually, over the last two to three sessions, um, that has been a strategy that has not been working because the market has been moving more in terms of points than uh, what the market was pricing. And a bit of inflation, a bit of macro with the PC on Friday. Um, we know that inflation has been coming down. We know that after having a big volatility uh, until the end of the year of September, uh, November, October last year, market is less volatile on PCE or CPI day. Um, and that is true as long, obviously, as the inflation uh, comes with in line or a bit below. So this is this is it for me for the week. Um, what we're going to have on Thursday, the 25th, if you are on Discord, if you're not, please join. We're going to have an Ask Me Anything uh, session. Uh, so I will be happy to answer your questions. So that will be one hour before the close of the US market. Um, Discord, please join. And then in 10 days time, we're going to have a webinar uh, called the 10 trading lies keeping you away from making money. I think it's going to be a funny one, an interesting one based on my experience, uh, both as a, as a trader PM and as an educator. Uh, and I can tell you that there are some interesting stories, especially with uh, uh, educators. Um, and then if you have questions about the 4x4, about the mentoring, about the trading community, uh, please ask. You can send me an email either uh, directly or LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever. This is it for me today. And I'll see you either on Thursday or next week. Bye-bye.